All right, so we have a special edition tonight, everybody. A little St. Patty's Day celebration, and and we just couldn't do it without the great Ed Foley. He you know he needs no introduction. So Foles, how we doing? Aaron Gro- Gobra. What does that mean? I don't know. Some, it's something in uh, something in Irish. Okay, happy, that Happy St. Patty's Day. <laughs> what are you wearing? What's a hat? This is this is my. Uh, uh charlotte knight's uh saint patty's hat that i bought last year and then everything shut down so finally got a chance to wear it after a year but the charlotte the charlotte knight's got a mad hat game you have a bullpen full of hats from the towns you have worked in no yeah you know what happened was uh you know I, i got an affinity for hats at about the same time that my eyesight went bad so i needed to wear a hat on the field and i went bald so um, I had to start wearing hats and I just started picking them up, you know, school by school. So it works out good. Keeps my, what do you have, what do you have in Charlotte? Do you have checkers? Who else? I got the checkers. I got the, I got about five Knights hats. Then the Charlotte Knights got a mad hat game and I got two or three, uh, Hornets hats. Now, do you have any hats from the university of Charlotte? I have a Charlotte 49ers hat. Uh, given I, I to haven't got mine. By, by, by Charlie. You should get on Charlie. Mine. You should get on Charlie. He, he'll, he'll take care of you. I, I, the guy, you know, he, he talks a lot of smack and he, he doesn't even, he's so spoiled. I couldn't even say, Hey man, I'll trade you a Carolina Panthers hat. Yeah. He just, he's like, no, it's not worth it to me. Like what, what uh 21 year old, what's he now? 20, what 20 year old, 21, God bless him. St. Patty's day. Yeah. He's 21. And what 21 year old says, no, sorry, man. You, you know, you're old news with the Panthers. I don't want your hat. It's crazy. He's That's uh, crazy. Yeah, he's gay. He's got it, but he's working. He's he, 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 they're working him up there. So, he's so no, his- no St. Patty's Day stories are safe on here. No, not they're not good. Well, you know, I I, I kind of felt over the years. You know, I'm not getting any younger. That um, you know, St. Patty's Day is kind of like amateur night. You know, like it's the time yeah. when all the other guys want to be Irish. You know, so I got the other 364 days to do all to do all that. So I'm kind of staying out of their way and letting, letting the younger guys kind of go out there and, and act like the Irish guys tonight. It looks like we actually have an Irishman joining the show. Hold on. Let's see. Let's see who it is. It's going to take a second here. We got a, we, we got a surprise. Whoa. Who's that? Who's this Irishman joining the show? Oh, Who's that, Foles? <laughs> hey, Corey. Here's what's going on, man. Corey, you're not Irish. No, he's not <laughs> Irish. <laughs> Foles, I wanted to surprise you tonight with a special guest with, with, with Corey. I said, oh, we're having Foles on. It's St. Patty's Day. You want to yeah. celebrate with friends and have a good time, but we brought Corey on. Yeah, it's it's awesome. Awesome <laughs> to see you, Chris. How, how are things? So you remember, you remember when we were on the field and uh, we're playing Memphis, and we threw the we threw the bailer out, and you got we got walked by the defensive tackle after about a twenty yard gain, and Corey was standing about nine feet away, just just coming out of the parking lot out of the tailgate, and I said, Chris, you would have scored on that one. He goes, Oh, Foles, I did score on that one. <laughs> well, let me say this to my defense: Memphis knew it was coming. They had a, a tight end a couple of years before have 250 yards receiving against them and i'm obviously much slower than chris but yep you know they were prepared for it yes chris was the chris was the national tight end of the week in the memphis game two years previous so they had to play defended he went on the mackey he went on the mackey (laughs) award list after one game if if that was the first game what was was the pace (laughs) what was the pace what were you saying chris so I was on and off that list pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, so was I, man. I I started the year on it every year, and I had like three catches, and uh, yeah, no no business on it. But that was, you know, that's how fully wanted it. It's it's a those awards are political. Those yeah. are about the wide receivers that are that are being listed as tight ends. The real yeah. men are blocking the C gap. <laughs> well, that's well, great. I, I, I think you did that a little bit better than I did there, Colin. <laughs> no, no, no. That's if Foley didn't give me a choice, actually. We got another guy here that's that's another tight end that wants to come on. He's pretty good at blocking the C gap too. Who is this? Oh. Who do we got? Oh, oh wow. Colin Thompson, Chris Coyer. What's up, coach? How you doing? Moose. 
<laughs> What's going we on, got, everyone? We got all your buddies in here tonight, Foles. You, you got all the Irish tight ends from uh, Temple on one call. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had to wear my Tottenham hat tonight for Moose. Oh, he's a big, man. He's a big Tottenham yeah, fan. Yeah, I wish. Oh, that, was, that was fun <laughs> this weekend, though. I hope you enjoyed yeah, that. Yeah, that was tough. That was a tough <laughs> loss. Hey, Moose, you want my prediction for the soccer game tomorrow? <laughs> uh, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll take it. One nothing. <laughs> uh, one nil, Foles. One nil. Yeah, one one nil. Yeah, it'll be I'm working one. on it. Lock it up. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. So, Corey, what are you up to now? We'll start no, I'm building now. I, I, I uh, actually, I was building outside the city and uh, kind of near Coach Foley's old neck of the woods. I was in Mount Laurel for a little bit. Yes, sir. Um, and uh, now I'm I'm getting ready to move back into the city uh, as far as building goes, and I'll be building a small, you know. Small, uh, small apartment and condo buildings, as well as, uh, as well as townhouses. What do you oh, got yeah. there, Falls? <laughs> my wow, my wow, cup. Every day. <laughs> what did you stop in Virginia on your way down and grab the biggest one? I, I, I got, I got um, seventeen forty-four ounce drinks on my last uh, trip to uh, New Jersey, just so I could keep the cups. <laughs> Falls, what's the thing you're missing the most from the Northeast, food and drink wise? The bread. Yeah, bread, the, the, yeah, the bread, the p, p, uh, pizza, and uh, and bread. The p, there's a couple places to get pizza down here, but uh, you know the the bread, the sandwich, the cheesesteaks down here. And uh, uh, Coach Rule just got uh, grabbed the cheats uh, cheesesteak uh, yesterday. As a matter of fact, called me up and uh, we were we were we were quarantined, so I was out of the office. But um, he's like, you he happen to be in the office? We're getting cheesesteaks, but they had the bread shipped down from Philly, so they had the uh, the roll oh, sent so. down because it's just really hard to make the bread. Um, Foles, what's your but, favorite cheesesteak in Philly? Um, you, you know, I'm a talk of the town guy, so I'm, 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 I'm against it. But but there's so many great places to get a steak that, like, it's not even a, you know, it's not even a fair conversation. But the, the key thing is the proper ratio between the steak and, and, the, and the cheese and the bread. Like, you can't have – there's some places that think they want to pile all kinds of steak on there. That's not – you know, that's not – there's some places that just put too much steak on there. Got to have a good ratio. Yeah, or the places that are the mainstream ones. I'm not going to publicly bash anybody. Or it's just too much cheese or no steak. It's too much bread. You know, that's right. not a good thing. No, Corey, do you have one? Do you have a favorite? You talking to me? Yeah, cheesesteak place for Mr. Uh, Coyer? John's Roast Pork, no question. No why question. For the, why, for the why pork that? or the cheesesteak? Both. Yeah, wow. Both. They're amazing. Yeah. Yeah. They're amazing. Great, I, like to go down there, get, I like to go down there, get half of one, half the other, and I'll split it with somebody else. Wow, that Reading Terminal, that's a that's a professional Reading Terminal order? Yes. Or that's the yep. next. No, all no, that's, that's the next. John, John's Roast Pork is down on, uh, down on Snyder. Okay. What about you, Moose? What's your flavor in Philly? I, I go with Ishka Bibbles. Ishka Bibbles. Yeah, I'm a big Ishka Bibbles guy. That's I a North Philly they're, move. They're, they're, yeah, that ratio is just perfect for me. Foles, yes. is, your, is that ratio on point? Is that a veteran? I, 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 you know, I, I'm just you're, – you're, you're groundbreaking right now with the three – the, those three answers, because you know, and you, we're not going to bash anybody with the traditional, what the traditional best ones were. The no, uh, no lie, the three that were mentioned right here are all in my top five. I mean, those are three. Ishka Bibbles is a tremendous state. What about what about Delisandros? What are everyone thoughts thoughts on that? I mean, that's that got the highest rating by Portnoy at Barstool Sports. He trashed the main ones, but he liked that the most. Foles go on Delisandros first. Um. I had I would have to take my finger and scrape out about a half an inch of steak, and it's it's fantastic bread, great cheese. Um, you know you got to wait, which is always which is, irks me a little bit. I don't mind waiting three or four minutes, but you know if I got to stand outside, I'm not a big fan. So they, good, solid steak, but too much too, too much meat. Moose, do you feel the same way? Yeah, I'm in that seven eight range where if I'm there. I'll, I'll get it, but you know, I'm not. I'm not driving. I'm not driving there to get it. I'm gonna go to Ishkabos. I'm gonna go to Jim's first, and then. Okay. <laughs> now, Corey, did you do a lot of Philly style when you were at Temple? Was that around in your heyday? <laughs> Actually, I don't think it was. <laughs> yeah, because I like Philly style pizza, and Sydney, uh, my fiance, like loved their mm -hmm. pizza, and we always got it at Temple. Coach Rule would like pack us in with food and ping pong tournaments and whatever on Wednesday nights. Moose, were you around for those days too? Yeah, I was around for those days at the, yeah. the tail end. I yeah, the you. tail end. Yeah, I was like, yeah. move. I, I watch. I go back and watch some of the games towards the end of my senior year, and I'm like, barely moving. I'm like, listen, <laughs> that is 100 percent to do with those. We had like senior meetings on Wednesday, which is Popeyes at four, 
and then we'd have ping pong at 5 30 and then you'd have to check in for dinner at like 7 30 i was i was moving <laughs> <laughs> we got another actually another guest coming in speaking of cheesesteaks in north philly what do we got here who's this who's this popping on oh wow legend we got got here (laughs) what's going on myrick what's up you know i know it's myrick (laughs) how's that he got got his jersey behind him (laughs) (laughs) where's your dolphins jersey bro Got one hanging up here somewhere. I'm sure you do in your room, like you're still in college again. (laughs) No swagger. We're talking cheesesteak, Myrick. So favorite cheesesteak place in Philly? I'm going to have to go John's Roast Pork. I'm in. That's what Chris Chris Corey said. What's your order, Chris? I think John's Roast Pork and Del Sandro's are like 1A, 1B. And then from there, it's, you know, pick your poison, really. You can't go wrong. No, you can't. No, I wanted to get everyone on, guys, today. And, again, this is a little not-for-long media, just a little separate segment we're doing on YouTube. And I was thinking St. Patty's Day, and I saw Foles' shoes this morning on Twitter, and we'll put them up here on the Instagram. (laughs) And there they are right there, folks. I mean, tremendous. Let me see if I can pin Foley to the screen here so everyone on YouTube can watch this when we get it up. I mean, that's just – That's incredible. That's just incredible stuff. Foles, first off, th- th- that's the inspiration behind this meet and greet. And I, I said, listen, Foles and I, we could talk for three hours, but we'll bore everybody with our with our drama. We got to have the guys on, have a tight end meet. So, Foles, wh- wh- where, what, when, why with these shoes? How did you get them? How did these come about? Well, the Under Armour guy came in, you know, back in the day. I'm, mean, you know, eight, nine years ago, we were in the Under Armour contract and was like, yo, I got to get you a pair of these because I was wearing the green hat. Cause we always had spring practice on, uh, on, or, or the next day from, uh, you know, from St. Patrick's day. And he came out and he's come, you know, after four or five years, he said, I gotta get you some shoes. And, uh, sure enough, he came back in and, uh, brought me some, some Under Armour, uh, shamrock boat shoes. They're tremendous. <clears throat> Mark, you need a pair of those shamrock boat shoes <laughs> to wear in South beach. No. Yeah. I need one of those for sure. What were you rocking in South Beach this year, Myrick? I mean, you're active for some games there. You had to have some swagger, right? Like, what were you wearing on, on game See, day in uh, South Beach? Listen, I'm a I'm a new adopter of some of Crocs. I don't know if you guys are a part of the lifestyle. The I'm all in now, all in. E tour shout out for the. Go. I don't think I'd ever buy myself a pair until this till that point. But E tour, defensive end force from Penn State, he got it. Hooked us all up. The Croc oh, yeah. life's the way to go. Foles, are you Croc crocked life. out or no? I got a pair for me tour. That's the only, I'm exactly the same as you. It's the only way I would have worn them. And uh, yeah, I've been wearing them a little bit. Problem with the Crocs for me is I, I like them around the pool, but if I wear them around the house for more than about seven minutes, my feet start to sweat profusely. <laughs> so Myrick, are you, Chris, are you wearing Crocs? Moose? Oh no, definitely not. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm a big slides guy. I used to be slides, but you know, the, the Crocs, you got the extra support. They're nice. They run a little bit. But... They're nice, Chris. I'll give it to you. So you're wearing them the game day and down in South Beach? I wear them everywhere. I wear them everywhere. Yeah. You I, wore I, them. I, I was bumming it out most of the year, you know, just the sweats, the shorts, the Crocs. But uh, now, yeah, no. Uh, uh, can no, I ask Chris a question? Picks. Go ahead, Bowles. Take so the mic. So, Chris, you're not, you're, you're not rolling up on game day wearing like, one of those uh, light blue linen sport coats and suits. No, no walk-in <laughs> pictures for me yet. You know, no, uh, I, I can't believe that. I think you. Would, I would think with you know with your looks and with your um your style that you would be a trendsetter down there. So, coach once, rule this year. My, go ahead, Mark. Yeah, go. Once, once the snap count goes up, then you know you might see a little. <laughs> coach yeah, rule. You try, to, you try to fly under the radar. Yeah, right. You're not trying to fly under the radar. Don't fool anybody. So coach rule this year, right. I, I, right when I was like, I think I'm going to make it and I made it. And I was like, all right, let me go get some sport coats and some pants, you know, for the trips. Okay. You know, completely normal, you know, spent yeah, just a little bit of money, no big deal. And first week he says, and everyone I talked to before is like, yeah, it's going to be, you know, slacks, shirts. I'm like, perfect. I wore a sport coat. No problem. No tie. He says, no guys, we're traveling in sweats. I was like, Oh so then the first week I walk in in a suit because it's optional and I'm thinking everyone's wearing it. And I was the only guy, but I got a picture 
I got a picture. My, my, my swagger was shown, even though I did not play and was not active. Now I wear sweats the whole year and I actually go through the game day pictures. Like, I think I got a shot. I have no shot. I have no shot. So you got to have your swagger right to get a picture. So Foles rocks his shoes. He makes it all, you know, Foles always has the hats on. He makes it, but I don't have that type of swagger. You'll get, you'll get it. You'll get it with age. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. We're, we try to get Kenny on Foles too, but you know, he's big time now. He's Mr. Draft pick. He's out to dinner tonight. He couldn't make it happen. A young man's oh. got to do his thing. Yeah. He does. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> yeah. Moose, what are you up to lately, man? What are you up to, Moose? What are you doing? Right now, I'm a, I'm a treasurer for a 501c3 nonprofit right now. So it's a lot of a lot of finance, a lot of boring days looking at numbers. <laughs> what do you miss like nights in EO uh, at all with Foley or what? <laughs> you don't uh, have to answer that question, Moose. Yeah, you don't really I, I played the fifth. No, I'm kidding. Uh no, <laughs> I miss I miss uh I miss EO specifically. I miss EO, I miss a locker room, I miss a lot of the stuff, you know, the games. Do you now do you now understand why I put you back in the study hall when you were a junior? <laughs> yeah, yeah, to give more time in the L. You know, I had to absorb the lighting in there. It's a different type of lighting than everywhere else on campus. <laughs> I think if we just had a window in our room, it would have been a much different vibe. To- totally different. Yeah. But no wind, no window. It just felt at times a little uh a little jailish. A little, yeah, but know, we had to rely, we had to rely on each other. We did. We had plenty of beacons of lights in there. I'm not going to name any names. <laughs> Queer, who was one of your favorite guys to play with over the years? We tried to get Cody Booth in here until he couldn't make it. Any guys back, back in the old days? Oh, man. <clears throat> favorite Could guys to play with? Um, actually, you know what? My, probably my favorite guy that I played with at Temple because he uh, he brought – Foley's always going to know as soon as I say it. Um, he always brought the juice. Delano Green. Delano yeah. Green was – Oh, it was always full of energy. Um, it was, it was you, the only way you knew it was going to be a bad day is if Delano didn't have energy at practice. That was the only way you knew it was going to be bad. Other than that, we had a, we had a good shot to have a great day. Good dude. Is that true? False. So he's full of juice. Yeah. He, Delano was awesome. He All brought, right, who it. was our juice guy? Like who, do, when we were there, who was the guy full of juice? Most, I mean, we I have the answer. Oh, I'll take I'll take that. What's the answer, Coach? Are you, are you serious right now? The Mark, Dominator. Hold on. The, do- the Dominator. <laughs> <laughs> All okay. he did was dominate. <laughs> oh, All right, so okay. the Dominator, Dom Neffy. Squad. Yeah. We had Neff. I texted yeah. Neff to come on the night. Uh, and that's how I got Moose's number. Um, <laughs> oh, but Jake Neff's Robinson. And, Neff's and, yeah, Neff's in school. And Jake, it was like last minute. I literally put this together. Like I texted you guys. They're like, wait, what? That's why I pushed it back. Bulls, not family problems. I said, family should <laughs> gonna push it back 15 minutes. What are so you up to scrape now? up another guy or two? Yeah, I was trying to scrape as many guys as I could. What are you up to now, Mark? Starting to train? Starting to get after it? Yep, hitting the ground running. Uh, just lifting and running right now. Trying to get into uh, some like more position stuff uh, coming up this week. Uh, yeah. You Back catching balls or trying you trying to catch balls or what are you like what yeah. are you doing? Yeah, I'll have uh I'll have my pops and a uh, little brother throwing to me. It's coming up soon. So we did all last year. Um and then I'm gonna try to uh just just uh you know get training in where I can. Uh, I got a speed guy that I worked with a little bit last year. You know, get your position stuff in that way too. So do you think I need a speed guy? Can't hurt. Cares. The reason the reason that speed guys exist are for guys like you guys. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the profession Corey. wouldn't exist. Yeah, right. It wasn't for tight ends. Well, let's finish it. Moose, who are some of the favorite guys you play with at Temple? It's got to be some characters. There were some characters on those teams. Yeah, there, there were some characters. Uh, I got to say, like, Kenny. Uh, Kenny Harper. Yeah. Yeah, Kyle Friend. He's awesome. He's an awesome teammate. Uh, Chris Coyer. <laughs> Temple legend. Who the hell is that guy? Yeah, who the hell is that guy? Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I most most of, I loved everybody. It, it was a great experience overall. I loved everybody, but yeah, those are just a few. Those are some awesome guys. Yeah, we had some good ones for sure. I mean, mine are. I mean, I try to keep it in a tighter room because there's so many other guys too. I love playing with like PJ and obviously Sharga, Kyle Friend, McGowan, D Docs, like all the yeah. receivers. We were we were spoiled. What about you, Chris? Anybody? Uh, Foles hit it on the head, man. The dominator. 
That's my that's my guy, my 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 right hand man. Um, our tight end room was pretty close, you know. Uh, I think it was Moose was there for a little bit. Um, I don't know if you were there with J Rob and and Dom. Was not. Uh, our, our tight you, end you missed out. Well. <laughs> yeah. Neff. Who else, Bowles? Yeah, Neff. Hey, did you know? I don't know yeah. if you guys knew this. It's a little it's a little known fact, but um, when Emmy has the all time Temple record for reps in a spring in a, during the course of spring practice so we had was it was it more keith that got it was more keith there and he got we moved him to defense is that that year or we moved uh, somebody to defense yeah it, no it was um it was who was it it was somebody else it wasn't more keith but i just remember you know chris went down parth went down i was like oh i guess i'm taking yeah. all the reps today <laughs> <laughs> i guess i'm taking all the reps in every single drill at, at all times oh this, this will be fun let's see he legitimately, he legitimately took four thousand reps in spring ball. It, it was it going into your junior year. I had to walk yeah. around with a bottle. Of, I had to walk around with a bottle of water. <clears throat> That's like there's another little known. There's another little known NCAA rule that exists um, with Temple is that um, you know Brandon McGowan is the all-time NCAA leader for getting his foot stepped on during the game and falling <laughs> down. So it's very, very obscure, very obscure rule. But um, and, and, and not getting injured doing it. So one of the things about getting your foot stepped on and then getting rolled up like a window shade is that you get hurt. But he never did. So m- miraculous. Sniper. <laughs> Does anybody remember we ran? Uh, oh, this is a this is horrible for me. Horrible nightmare. And actually, people use it because it's like a decent picture of me because you can't find many with the ball in my hand. We played UConn. We ran wide delay, and I came across the field wide open. We converted. I think it was fourth and whatever three, and I would have caught and ran for like. Probably fifty. Believe it or not, I'm not. No, yep. Chris is. Chris is rolling. There was no one near you. There was no one near me. <laughs> no. Some guy reaches out, and I literally just step on his hand. I didn't even like trip me. I stepped on his hand with my heel, and I fell right on my face. You were you were <laughs> at least three feet away from his hand. You felt you fell over one significant blade of grass. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a Those low yard point. Lines will get you. They will. We especially the, the link. We had to slow the film down to see if the guy actually touched Colin. We just flipped right through it. I remember just you being like, nope, we're just moving on. I'm just going to pretend because this didn't happen. Corey, was that your biggest game, that Memphis game, when you just ran the Baylor concept against that buzz pressure? As a tight end, yeah. As a tight Not end, yeah. Pressure. I mean, I only had three catches in that game, but yeah. But it was, you- uh, what was it? It was, it was two, two Baylors. It was two Baylors. The first one went for like 45, and then the second one went for 75. <laughs> Both, Chris, had I mean- a mon- Chris had a monster game at the um, – in, in Wyoming, I mean uh, against Wyoming, yeah, um, in, in in the New Mexico Bowl, people forget about that. You were the MVP of that game, weren't you, Chris? I was. I was. Everybody was talking about Bernard. Tired. Yeah, you and Tahir. I mean, everybody was talking about Bernard. He was going to do this and that, and and uh, you had a you had a hell of a day. That the ball you threw to um uh, to Streeter yeah. there right before halftime was was huge. I, I remember we had to. Uh, I remember going into that play, we had to beg Coach Adazio. Because we were we were up we were up pretty pretty well there and he didn't he, he didn't really want to go for it unless we got out to a certain point I want to say it was like the forty and uh, and we got to like the thirty eight or something like that and we were we were begging him coach let's go for it let's go let's go let's go we probably had I don't know forty seconds left to go in the half and that very first play he called he called streak I'm just three guys down the field I told Streeter before the play I'll meet you in the end zone <laughs> it, and it was a dime I remember like. I remember all the big catches for our guys throughout the years, and they wouldn't even value them as big catches. But to me at that time, they were just big catches. So uh, my first year at Temple was 14. Moose at, at UCF caught yeah. the Hank route over the yeah. middle. There was, <laughs> I mean, literally. Literally, how, many, how, how many Hank routes? Like literally everybody listening, this is literally just over the ball. Just go yeah. from the tight end spot, go over the football five yards deep. And every time we catch it in practice, it's like a ping pong, just bang, bang, bang. And then you yeah. fall forward for like eight. And it's like, great job, tight end. Well, this right. time Moose catches it, turns around like he's going to get killed. And there was nobody there. <laughs> How far did you run remember, for, Moose? Yeah, it was like 20-something. I just remember catching the ball. I'm like, okay, the hit's coming. I'm just going to turn around make sure I don't, you know, make sure I don't fumble the ball. <laughs> turn around. There's no one there. I'm like, oh, I almost, almost tripped just because I turned around. I expect to get hit. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to start running now. Like, there, there's no one here. The safety's parted. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. This is what it feels like to be a receiver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Moose, you you caught and run that one. And then this is probably – it probably is Chris's first career catch. We're at Penn State. Was that it, Chris? That was my first catch, yep. So we ran a play action, and Chris was on the 
backside of it. So he ran the over route and I ran the, the late route and PJ just ripped it in there <laughs> <laughs> and Chris just got laid out. I, or I don't even like, you don't even got laid out, but you just like kind of rolled over. I remember right in front of my eyes, I was right in front of the Penn State bench. And I picked you up. I said, welcome to the big leagues kid. <laughs> I mean, you were probably what? 220. Yeah, that was, that was, that was a crazy one for the first one, for sure. I remember that game was super loud. I would think we had a shift for that play. And I remember like, I was so far up on the ball because I couldn't hear anything. I had no idea what was going on. And yeah, PJ stuck it in there, basically glued it to my chest. And I just held on and just closed my eyes. And yeah, I think I got it. Was it on your birthday? Wasn't that your birthday? No, no, that was, no, I think every year it seemed like we played ECU on my birthday. You you want to catch did you ever tell you Chris's mom called me and said, "Hey, it's Chris's birthday this weekend. Can you can you make sure he, he, you guys throw him the ball?" I said, "Yeah, sure, I will." Oh, your mom just got exposed. <laughs> she's the sweetest. She's, she's the, the sweetest. Best. Oh my that's god! The tight ends got to do what they can to get the targets, that's right. especially that's at exactly Temple. Exactly right. Man. Exactly. That's right. Mom's looking out. Yeah. Right. I'll that's never true. forget the look on your mom's face. And Colin was there when we when we uh, gave it a, gave you the scholarship at the uh, during the spring game. Oh, yeah. She was. On cloud nine. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. Was, that was awesome. Yeah. J- Jeff's like, hey, uh, and Foles are like, hey, can you like make sure you bring out like Chris's parents or whatever? I'm like, yeah, sure. I mean, sure. What's going on? I'm like, no way. He's getting a scholarship. That was awesome. That was probably like one of the proudest moments of my life. Like, here I am. Like, <laughs> it, right. it was, man. I was emotional. It was cool. Like, what was that like, Chris? I don't, I don't have to like peel back layers, but like, geez, I mean, that, that was, that was definitely, that's definitely number one memory at Temple. I mean, yeah. I think that was after my third year. So I'm kind of wondering, like, okay, like, am I going to get one? Am I not going to get one? Am I going to graduate without one? And then I was I was goofing off in the back with uh, the Dominator. They're about <laughs> to announce the most valuable walk on them, tapping him on the back. I'm like, good job, bro. It's you. And they called me up, and I was so shocked. And then they, uh, Coach Collins announced I was on scholarship. And the, the, the tough thing was I was at halftime at the, at the spring game. So I had to go out the next half and I was so juiced up. I think I got a holding penalty to like the first play because <laughs> yeah. I was just shaking, man. That was, that's definitely a, a top memory of mine. Does any, can anybody equate? There's one other memory. <laughs> the one other emotional memory. You guys remember it? Memphis against Memphis, again, against Memphis. Sal Major. Year. Sal oh, Major. Oh, when geez. Sal scored. How about that? You so can... Sal, but, but so Sal, we put Sal on, we, we put Sal on for, I can't remember. I think it was his fifth year. We put him on scholarship and then he was going to appeal to come back for a sixth year. Cause he had a bunch of stuff that was going on. So I texted Sal, I'm sorry, Sal. So, so no, but I'm saying, so Sal's going to come back for a sixth year, but he's got to win the appeal and we don't know what the, we can't wait for the appeal. So we had to take a scholarship. So we weren't, and I don't even know if we ended up give, getting it back to him, but he was going to come back out for the team, not on scholarship. And then he, co- he comes back in week 10 in a huge game and scores that touchdown. And I was balling on the sideline. It was unbelievable. Memphis, it's the same <clears throat> play. He ran the over route probably on play action. Same thing that Chris ran. So was he the over or is he the flat? He may have been the flat. Yeah, because he stopped. I remember his little sidestep. His little sidestep. He had the he had the uh, the high top Under Armour's on. One move. Yeah, that's it. One move, and you got to cut and go forward. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, there's some good ones. There's some good ones for sure. Yeah, no, but yeah, the St. Patty's Day special. Foley's tight ends. Foley's finest. But before we go, Foles with well, the '86 tape. Is that thing still floating around anywhere? The '86 tape is defunct. We got <laughs> we got we got to redo it. It's got to. It's got to be. We we need to have a meeting. We need to, we need to have a reunion, and just go clip by clip and, and bring it all back. Then there's going to be great debates. Like, is this even worth it? Well, that's the great thing is now that the tape is defunct, everyone's going to claim that they have eight to ten plays that should go on there. When we all know that, you know, it's really not really not that does, way. Does anybody know <clears throat> the greatest '86 tape play of all time other than Ed Foley? Oh yeah, the uh, what's it called, Jaguar? I, I was gonna say I was thinking of Erod's Jaguar against Akron. Erod. That's it. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. Yep. I, I want to say that was my freshman year. Oh, so you not, take us through that play? 
it was it was um out of the bunch set um Erod was the fullback which means he was aligned inside the tight end between the tight end and the tackle to the right and I'm trying to think who the who the back was was it Jason think, Harper was it Harper it was either because we were early in the season there it was it, it, it that honestly that might have even been Lamar McPherson at that point no, 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 Lamar no. Got a few plays the ball, the ball carrier was somebody with some decent. Oh, no, the ball carrier. No, that was hard. That was definitely hard. It was hard. Yeah. So the the why, the why the why was Maneri. It was Maneri, Maneri or Bal Savage, and 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 um and, and Erod came across and he had a great feel for the play. So the end closed. He put his hand on the end, bypassed the end, and went to the Sam who was the overhang, and he ran through his outside shoulder. And he knocked, he knocked the Sam down and sprung the play. And as he ran over the, the Sam, he never lost stride. So he just kept running and he blocked the free and the backside corner or the backside safety came down and he ripped through him too. And he lost his feet, did a somersault, came back on his feet and tried to get a fifth or sixth block down <laughs> by the goal line to spring the touchdown. It was like he literally blocked five guys on the play. It was unbelievable. Essentially, it's a reverse, and, and we'll see if we can get the play up uh, on the yeah. YouTube by fully sucking through it. But, he, yeah, he knocked down like four or five guys. He sprung the play, and then someone hustled down from the backside. That was my favorite part, and he rolled over and lunged, and, yeah, that's probably the greatest. I don't, like, my, my favorite 86 memories are watching Maneri and just sitting here and being like, wow, I think I'm a blocking tight end, and I'm watching this guy. Like, <laughs> this, this guy's unreal. But I come to find out down the road, Steve's a cheat code. He's 285 pounds at 6'7". <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and we're still in the MAC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand that you guys, you know, by the time you guys had gotten there, we had gotten the program elevated, and you guys were blocking legitimate guys. He was mauling dudes out there. I mean, he was mauling them. Uh, here's the one other thing about the '86 tape was the was the argument on who had the best chip block co coming Dude. off coming off the hit the defensive end in the drop back, and and there was some great candidates, but it came down to. Sal versus Delaware State, who completely decleated the guy, and then Ro uh, De Roman Deloach um, against Navy in, 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 the, in the championship game wow. with with Roe. I mean, he, he, I mean Roe just smoked the guy, and 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 but, but the key thing about Rose is it was on um, it was on Adonis's touchdown. Was it Adonis or Kirk? It was it was it was on the the second touchdown? In the uh, championship game was it Ventel? Ventel was the first. Oh no, the, the first was a speed sweep. The second may have been Ventel. Oh, was the one Ventel? deep to Kirkwood over the middle. That's Kirkwood. the post was I, to Kirkwood. Yeah. yeah, I can't remember, but Mixed, I, I, I can't remember. Mixed. I can't remember. I can't remember. This is typical, right? I can't remember who caught the touchdown. Who caught, who caught the sixty yard touchdown? But I remember the tight end decleating de 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 the defensive end to give the quarterback time to throw it. So for those at home keeping score, the 86 tape, you're wondering what that is. Just a highlight video of the best of the best, you know, plays of the, from the tight ends over the years. And there's some tough, tough dudes. There's been some real tough dudes. There's no catches on the film. No, there's a couple. Like, <laughs> there's, like, two or catches, and, like, you just run, like, five people over. That's, like, the only yeah. way you get – like, running two guys over is just not acceptable. So there's right. none, yeah, no. um, Foles, uh is the is the I don't want to get into it too much and sell you out. Is the Tyson story uh, on kickoff is that eligible for this or no? That's what I was going to say. You got some novelty plays sprinkled yeah. in the '86 tape throughout. <laughs> the eight, the eight, I mean, Tyson. That, that was the that was the third or that was the third or fourth play on the '86 tape for sure. That was it. That was uh that was on the tape. So Tice, I'm trying to think. Oh, Tice, Tice comes down. Tice is on the uh, and Tice is probably. <laughs> 5'10, 235, and he can run. Like he's a, and he's and he's a transfer and he was a wrestler, like in just a complete meathead. So he's on the scout kickoff team. I'm trying to think who he hit. I think it was, I think he it was Tyler. Was it? Oh, he hit Wyatt. Oh, it was Wyatt. <laughs> yeah. He came down as a scout. He came down as a scout. At, oh, it was like a Wednesday practice. Oh my God. Um, and knocked them out. <laughs> came running down and Wyatt came out to block him and he knocked him out and Adazio was pissed and he started yelling and as he was yelling Tyson's going whoa 
<laughs> celebrating the hit and and you you see him like parading around and Wyatt is laid is laid out on the field on the at, at EO out on a, on a scout and kickoff play that's that absolutely made the 86 tape well, that, that, that was I'm pretty sure that was the that was the only way to become a to become a fullback for a while is you had to knock out the previous fullback <laughs> right. king of the hill king of the hill <laughs> Chris, uh, Myrick, were there any more novelty plays on there? I'm trying to think. You, that's a great word for it. There were definitely some novelties. Like, weren't even in-game. It'd be like an in-practice play. Yeah, I don't know. I can't. That, I definitely remember that one, though. That was the one I was thinking of. So running down on kickoff and blowing yeah. somebody up. It's one of the funniest moments in Temple history. It has to be. Yeah. Well, there's... somebody had – who had the one um, – trying to think who it was. Well, it might have been Sal. Who had the kick out the kickoff return block? Before they changed, me. before they changed me. the rule, I remember Sal <laughs> did have like a sneak attack, like blow somebody up one on KOR. Sal yeah, came across he the hit field with the, the old team. Before the old rules, he snuck he in behind the double Houston, team, right? And yeah, just I mean, he he knocked he knocked the he knocked the guy off the screen, like you know he was he, you see him he's running down the thing, and the guy just the guy just disappeared. That, that was wow. on that, that was on there for sure. Well, we'll, we'll have to keep these uh, these kind of random. You know, YouTube not for long media episodes going, and we'll just have random tight end show up because there's a group. <laughs> I always thought that was cool when Foles like, "Hey, we're having a tight end reunion. You got to be there." Like there was the one day, I think it was the one spring game. I was we were still there, and Moose and Tice and all the old guys came back. I think Queer came back. Maneri mm -hmm. was there. It was like 15 guys. I think it's one cool thing it's about yeah. that area. Everyone yeah, stayed up great. there. Well, it was great. Like that mem that members play we mentioned before. Like those guys and and Coach. Um, um, whether whether it was Matt or and then you know, Collins did it too, where the alums could be on the field, and of course those guys were like wanted to be two feet away from the players, so like you could look over and and you guys could talk to each other. Like it you didn't awesome. even know you you didn't know like you weren't sure that was Coyer when I said that to him when he was like, yeah, that was me. I, I did I did score on that, and you're like, is that Coyer? I'm like, yeah, that's him, the legend, right there in the <laughs> flesh. Guy, yeah, that's <laughs> the flesh. Oh, that was where I met you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I probably. The sideline that day. You were yeah. wearing a flannel. <laughs> exactly. And then we're a couple of years later, we're out in the parking lot together. I'm like, yeah, I like this guy. My type of guy. My type of guy. Well, the St. Patty's Day special. I'm uh, I'm blessed to have you guys on. I'm blessed to be able to go to work with all you guys at some point in my life, other than Chris. But Chris and I have obviously hung out and become buddies through the years. So it all starts with Foles, though. We appreciate you, Foles. I wanted to do a little St. Patty's Day, the great Ed Foley, uh, Mr. Irish himself. There's no one like Great to himself. see you guys. Great to see you too. Hey, you Thanks for coming on, guys. Appreciate it. Love you guys. That's it for the uh, for the St. Patty's Day special. Check out the original Fudge Kitchen, fudgekitchens.com, and Wealth Advisory Services. Check them out. Paul Krumenacker, great group of guys there. So check them out. Appreciate you guys.